w one of the characters of humanism back in the uh, middle of the 20th century was to kind of carry the torch of John Dewey. Uh, John Dewey uh, had a lot to say about religion, obviously, and uh, one thing that he felt was important that was that humanists use religious rhetoric. Uh, in other words, he, he liked the idea of God, but Dewey's idea of God was an ideal, and it allowed him to use God language, but among other humanists, there could be a wink and a nod, knowing that we're not talking about their God. I'm wondering if, with the benefit of hindsight, we can look back at that as maybe a strategic error, because it allowed religious rhetoric to seep into the political well, culture. Well, I would do I would not have allowed it. Just let them have that much, and they'll they'll be sacrificing, you know, golden bulls. We've got under God and the pledge now. We've got in God we trust as our national motto. Uh, it's really uh, hard to imagine getting God out of government. I at think this you point. have to do it through negatives. Of whom the great master was the only Roman emperor I wholeheartedly admire, which was Tiberius, who was a brilliant politician, a brilliant, uh, well, he was a man of state. When Augustus died or was murdered, uh, he became emperor because the succession was working then. Immediately the Senate, SPQR, sent him mandate that anything he, that he proposed, they would automatically concur and accept. And I've been in his office on the Palatine this entire office from which he governed the Roman Empire was smaller than this room. He's got one biggish room for himself with a pretty big mirror. And uh, there are two or three little cubby holes for his secretaries and scribes. Sometimes a room will suggest what went on in somebody's mind. And, and then I found out what he had, his response to the Senate. And he said, I cannot accept this, whatever his phrasing was, blanket uh, acceptance of anything that you might come from the Palatine Hill here. Suppose the emperor's mad. Suppose there's been a, a coup in the palace and somebody else is in charge and you don't know about it. You still want the word of the principate to be automatic law? And they send back word, well, yes, Augustus. They started using the title then. Yes, Augustus, you are the law. All power is with you. Everything that you send us will be accepted and um, made law. Well, he sent it back with the same objections. He said, this is insane, you know. Suppose I am not here. Somebody else is in my place which had happened before. They went on and on for about three or four times. Third time, he sent it back to them for amendment. And they said, this is not acceptable to me. And they said, we beg you, great Augustus, et cetera, et cetera. And he realized he was getting nowhere with them. And he said, I accept your folly, but I can only make one obiter dicta. I like to think that's the first use of that legal term. And that is how eager you are to be slaves. That, to me, is the United States today, eager for slavery. In uh, one of your essays, on, actually, on George Washington, uh, you had suggested that the Constitution was drawn up to protect property rights, kind of in, in, uh, in as somewhat of a reaction to Shays' Rebellion and some of the more populist uh, strains. Uh, how, how do you think that's so? How, how does the Constitution, uh, a preservation well, of the, capital? the couple who made that, you know, kind of one of the facts of our republic, are Charles and Mary Beard. Mm. And they've spent their lives, you know, writing histories of the founding of the country, and it always came down to the protection of property, nothing else. And having gone through Shays' Rebellion and having had to face the events in France, that's what scared the shit out of everybody, was 
George and Martha's heads to be cut off on the mall. I mean, they were talk people talked along those lines. Mm -hmm. So it was survival. We lost what might have been, I don't know, great constitution. There's no sign of that anywhere in the documentation, but there may have been something. I think the exaltation of property rights somehow contributes to the dumbing down of America. Is there a, a connection between those two, somehow? You can make one. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs>